thing. There's no such thing as a homosexual Christian. Just I'm like there's a no such thing as a drunken Christian. Am I invisible to you? I'm, I'm trying Christian. to preach. You know what? You probably have no intent of repenting. You just want to distract the preaching. God will never accept homosexuality. Just like he will never just like he'll never accept a murder. Hey, for God, Christians don't use the F word. Everybody knows that. And you just use the F word. You're not a Christian. You know what? There are not F word saying Christians. There are not drunken Christians. There are not thief Christians. There's no such thing as a sinning Christian. See, because Jesus Christ sets free from the power of sin. Do you know how everybody knows you're a Christian? Because you live a new life. You're set free from sin. But we live in a day and age where the devil spreads all kinds of lies about who Jesus is. And this is... Uh, you need to stay out of your life. Then you can't call me a fact. I didn't say that. No, I you're don't use that word. I'm a homosexual that's going to hell. You know what? I don't use the word F A G G O T. I find it derogatory. I'm just stating. No, you can just tell me because I have sex with other guys. I'm going to hell. You right? sure are. Yeah, really? you need to repent. You need to depart from your life of sin. Without holiness. Why are you so violent? No one I'm violent. God. You look like you're you're kind of no because you're telling me you know, me, you know my life. I know that homosexuals will go to hell. Homosexuals will go to hell in the judgment unless they repent. You want to talk to the mayor? Unless they repent. Right now, you want to talk to him? If it's the mayor of Spokane, mayor of Spokane, homosexuals will go to hell. I'm speaking the truth in love. I'm speaking the truth in love. You are a light. All right. We are lost. Okay. So now he's being judgmental, saying that I'm lost. Okay. So what are you saying that I am? I'm preaching Bible. I'm a homosexual. No homosexual will inherit God's kingdom. Can I ask you one question? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think I'm going to keep preaching. Because you're shut down. No. Drunkards okay. will not inherit God's kingdom. Murderers will not inherit God's kingdom. You know what? You don't have to murder people to go to hell. Just be a homosexual. Just be a liar. Just be a thief. And I do not mean to point, uh, to single out homosexuality. Yes. There are other sins that are sending people to hell. Like you young men that look at the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue. That is lust. That is lust. That says that if you look with lust, you commit adultery. You commit adultery. The internet is up the devil. Thank you. You say, why is there sin in the world? Because of you. Because of you. Your fault. Your fault there's sin in the world. You're not doing a thing about it. You're making yourself a part of it. Are you boycotting Hollywood? No. Are you turning your eyes from pornography? No. Are you using your mouth to speak the truth only? No. Are you using your life to live for God and to live for holiness? No. Your fault there's sin in the world. You're doing absolutely nothing to prevent the sin in this world. And yet you blame God for it. What hypocrisy. It is our responsibility to live for God. It is our responsibility to live without sin. It's our responsibility to uphold righteousness. Our responsibility to do what's right. Your influence is to turn people away from truth, to turn people away from Jesus Christ, to turn people to sin. Maybe even you, I don't know you, but you're, you smoke, you probably influence people to smoke. I'm not trying to pick on you, I'm just making a point. What are you doing to turn people away from wickedness? You know what? Telling everybody that any sin you want to do is okay, that's not doing something. That's actually part of the problem. We don't call any sin what it is. We justify all kinds of wickedness and call it, all, all, and call it okay. Call it tolerance. Call it progression. God is not progressive. He's old-fashioned. God is old-fashioned and judgmental. You better get used to it. An old-fashioned, judgmental God is going to call you to account on the day of judgment. An old-fashioned, judgmental God is going to put you in hell for being a liar. An old-fashioned, judgmental God still hates sex outside of marriage. An old-fashioned, judgmental God commands you to stop using filthy language. An old-fashioned, judgmental God commands you to stop using His name as a
Woe unto you if you're living in sin. Woe unto you if you're living like the devil. You cannot live like the devil and go to heaven. You can't curse like the devil and go to heaven. You can't watch the type of movies that the devil likes and go to heaven. You can't be a foul mouth and go to heaven. The wages of sin is death. And it's your fault that there's sin in the world. And the longer you live in rebellion, the more you're part of the problem. And your children will most likely go to hell if you live in sin. Your parents, all the left people around you will go to hell in their sin because you are not doing a thing to stop it. You live in sin yourself. You influence people to sin. You laugh at sin in your movies. You never stand up and say this is wrong. You never stand up for what's right. And then you wonder why your bike gets stolen. You wonder why somebody beats up your kid at school. It's because of you. You won't do a thing about it. You won't lift up your hand to pray. You won't read the Bible. You won't learn truth. You won't live for God. You're too busy having fun. And then you cry and whine about the consequences. You live in sin. You live like a, a, a rebel. You live like an animal in sin. And then you cry about all the consequences of sin. What hypocrisy. If you want things to change, you need to start living for God. If you want sin to go away and for people to do right and to do righteous things and to truly love each other, stop sinning. How about you start living in love? How about you start loving your neighbor? How about you start living in truth? How about you start loving God? That will make a difference. If you're really, really upset about the sin in the world, start doing what's right. Live for God. There is an absolute truth. And when you abandon absolute truth, you're only left with your own opinion, and we see where that's gotten us, haven't we? Pornography on, I mean, naked women, and, and you can't even buy coffee without naked women having to sell it. Come on. Come on, America. Where's your conscience? Stop sinning against God. Sin understands the love of God. See, the key to understanding the love of God is understanding how bad our sin is. Understanding that we are criminals in the sight of a holy God, that we deserve to go to hell because we hold lies, because we've been driven by our lust, because we've passed off our conscience. You know, the Bible in, in Galatians 6, 8 says this, for he that sow into the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that sow into the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. So let me translate that. You have a God-given conscience that's supposed to... That is the voice of God telling you right from wrong. But see, when you live after the flesh, you yield yourself to the temptations of the flesh. And you go against your conscience. Your conscience screams out, don't do that. Don't be a homosexual. Don't masturbate. Don't look lustily at that woman. Don't steal that. Don't lie. Don't curse. Your conscience cries out against your sinful life. Your conscience cries out against your rebellion to God. But the person, the person, and that is where this leads. That is where corruption leads. When people go out of bounds, see God put a bounds sexuality. He put a boundary there. He put a boundary there. The men would not cross over into that which condemns them and sends them to hell. I'm here to redefine the bounds because I don't want people to go to hell. I have too much love to live in sin and then lie to people and tell them that they're going to heaven when they're rebels, when they're dead. You need to repent. You need repentance if you're living in sin. Who lied to you? Not judge. By the way, you know what? I'm here preaching. Hey, stop cursing. Quit cursing. Quit cursing. Yeah, but Jesus said, "Judge righteous." I'm saying there's all kinds of sexual sin, and homosexuality is just one of them. That's just a flavor of sexual sin. Sex outside of marriage is sin. That will send you to hell. You know what? Everybody here would probably condemn child molestation. And you should. But you know what? If you're
you're having sex out of sight in marriage, you're going to go to hell with the pedophiles. If you are looking at women that you're not married to to lust after them, you're going to go to hell with the pedophiles and the murderers. I'll say it again. You don't have to be a murderer and go to hell. Just be a masturbator. Just be a pornographer. Just watch Fifty Shades of Grey. Just be the type of person that watch, watches that filthy movie. Hey, just love witchcraft through your Harry Potter movie. God hates witchcraft. And many of you, maybe you're not sinning sexually, but if you're watching Harry Potter, you're going to go to hell with all the pedophiles, with all the murderers. The way to sin is death. And that's what we're down here. We have to define sin. You need repentance or you can't have the grace of God. The grace of God is available to everyone if they repent. But if they want to live in sin, they can't have eternal life. As the Bible says, they just read it. He who sows to the spirit to, to the flesh will reap corruption, but he who sows to the spirit will have everlasting. And so life. this is what sin does. Sin corrupts people. Sin, if you choose it, it causes you to start ignoring your conscience. You start ignoring that voice that says, don't do it. You start ignoring the voice of God. You realize that in God's love, He put His very voice right in your own brain so that you would seek Him. But yes, that's why you feel bad or you should feel bad when you lie to somebody. You start sweating. Oh man, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, I'm glad I got away with that. That's why you know when you're sinning. That's why you know that you have sinned. That's why that man there got so upset with me. You know why that homosexual got angry? Not because I was being so unloving. No, he got so angry because I'm touching that conscience and he's in rebellion to the voice of God. He's in rebellion to God. And so when I come down and start preaching and touching that idol of his heart, he rises up in rebellion. You know what you saw? You know what you saw when you got my face? You saw a person resisting God, resisting the grace of God. God is showing love. He's showing love. If you're here right now and you're being offended, it's because I'm touching that conscience. The voice of God is touching that conscience, trying to draw you to repentance. But if you want to stay in rebellion, if you want to stay in rebellion, you're going to fight against God, and then you're going to get violent. That's why people are violent. I'm not being mean to anybody. I'm just proclaiming truth. Proclaiming truth. Since I've been a Christian, I've never, I've never been violent to any person. I've never. Been angry and got in someone's face and wanted to fight. No, because that's not the way of Christianity. The way of Christianity is to preach the truth in love, and then if you reject it, my my hands are clean. You're the one that's gonna have to bear the responsibility for rejecting the love of God. And this is the love of God. That he would come to a people that hate him, that want nothing to do with him and cry that they would repent and come back. You were made for God. You are you would be at home with Jesus. But you've rebelled. And now, in eternity, you'll have a new home. It's called hell. It's where all the rebels go. All those that resist the love of God, all those that resist His call to repentance, must go to hell. What else would God do with you? What else can God do when He comes in His love and mercy and says, Come unto me, all ye that are burdened. I will give you rest. I will cleanse you from every sin. I will give you a new life. And yet, you choose a sin corrupts. It corrupts human nature. We were made for holiness. We weren't made for sin. The homosexual... They're doing that which is not natural. Our bodies weren't made for that. But they cross that line of conscience and they corrupt what God has made to be good and make it something sinful. So in my life, in my life, I went down that path of corruption. Like for example, See, that's what sin does to you. Somebody call 911.
And that's why I live for him, and that's why I speak for him. And he's calling all. 